Hi friends, how are you today? This is Heather, the 20 Minute Stitcher, coming at you with my next floss tube video. I hope you all are having a wonderful December. Today is Saturday, December 10th. It's sad that I have to look at my watch. Um, it's Saturday, December 10th, 2022. We are almost out of this year. It's crazy to think that. So I have missed you all. I'm a little off schedule. I should have filmed, should, right? I. On my normal schedule, I would have filmed last weekend, uh, but you know, life has not been normal lately. Nothing bad, just it's been a little overwhelming with work, volunteer activities, and last weekend I just was in the, I was just exhausted and I decided, you know, I love my floss tube, I love all of you people, but it was kind of the one thing that I didn't have to do, so I decided to take the weekend off. Uh, but I am happy to be back at this video. It ended up being somewhat serendipitous that I came off schedule a little bit because normally I would have filmed last weekend and then next weekend, but I am now going to be traveling out of town to visit a friend next weekend, so won't be filming. So this works out well. So I do have a fair amount to show you. I kind of went on a little bit of a new start spree. I attended the Jingle Ball um, and so have patterns and, and um, haul from that that I'm so excited to share. Plus, I also realized I have haul and happy mail from like a month ago that I realized I never shared. It didn't get put in my usual place, and so I just never shared it. So I'll have that to share today too. Uh, so yeah, lots of content today. Uh, so I'll be filming this weekend, and then I don't know that I'll film another actual floss tube um, this calendar year. Um, however, I am thinking that I'm going to do at least one live stitch um, during the winter break. So maybe Friday, December 23rd, maybe that week between Christmas and New Year's, maybe both, who knows? Um, but I will, when I do decide what I'm gonna do, I will post that um, on Instagram. I'm the 20 minute stitcher there as well. So I hope that uh, whenever I do decide to do it, it will fit with your schedule and we can hang out and stitch for a little while. So I hope all of you are well and have been having um, lots of stitchy fun lately. I have, as I mentioned, I've been super busy with work and so I haven't done as much stitching as I would like, but I do have two new starts, um, some small progress on some whips, uh, and then uh, that's kind of it. So this one will probably be fairly short. It probably will be half and half because I have so much haul from from Jingle Ball. Um, so it'll probably be about half showing my stitching and half showing my gifts. And I have a giveaway. So please stick around to the very end uh, to learn about the giveaway. All right. I've been talking for three minutes. That's about two minutes and 45 seconds too long. So let's get into the stitching. So I do have two new starts. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen these already. And I really haven't worked on them since the day I started them. But the first is um, Thread Milk Designs State Splendor Series Ohio. And I started this during the, um, during the debacle that was the Ohio State-Michigan game. I'm very happy our boys are still playing for the national title, but that game was very sad um, and upsetting. So, but um, this is where I got during that game. Put my board up here just to make it a little easier to see. Um, so I got the biplane done, that's the Wright Brothers plane, because uh, even though they, they tested it at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, they uh, were born and raised, lived and, and worked and had their workshops um, in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, got the start of the O up here, 17, uh, we're the 17th state in the union. Um, this is going to say with God, which is um, part of the state motto. I'm trying to decide whether to try and fit a Blocko in there somewhere for Ohio State, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, so that is Ohio by Thread Milk Designs, and I am stitching this on a 32 count Lugana from Bestitch Me in the color Sand Dollar. And I am actually stitching it one over two, even though it's 32 count. Um, I kind of liked the more primitive look of the single strand um, rather than the two. I feel like they're very simple, kind of primitive designs, and so I liked the look of the single strand. And I am stitching this just with 
Um, I think the pattern calls for Gentle Arts Country Redwood is what the pattern calls for. I just pulled a red that I had from Stash and I am using Turkish red. Um, it seems to match my sweater. <laughs> I am wearing Turkish red, uh, wearing, using, I'm apparently wearing Turkish red too, because look, it matches. I am stitching with Turkish red from Weeks Dye Works. So that was um, my start and stitch during the Ohio State Michigan game. And um, I will probably just sit on this until um, New Year's Eve when Ohio State plays Georgia in the first game of the playoffs. And this is in my Yellowstone bag from um, Forbidden Fiber Co. So, which, I don't know, what do people think so far this season? I'm liking it so far. I feel like it's a slow build to mass chaos later in the season, which is usually how it works, right? Uh, the next piece I started on December 1st, uh, because I just felt like it, is Let's Rejoice. Uh, designed by Ursula Michael and published by is Imaginating Ink. Never heard of that company, but this was in my local needle workshop as a model. And it was just was so beautiful that I actually ended up buying it exactly as, as the model stitcher had stitched it. Um, I'm not someone who hates backstitch. I actually kind of like backstitch. I feel like it goes quickly. Um, so I'm looking forward to stitching this one. I've had this one in my sort of pattern collection for a couple of years now and I just decided you know what I'm gonna start it um, on December 1st it's the only time I've touched it it's the only day I've worked on it um, so I haven't gotten super far but that is my progress so far so I have the word sing and the P of peace so this is obviously a center start um, and this is on a um, opalescent Lugana hold on I've got the paper here it doesn't say who who it's from. It's just a 28 count opalescent Lugana in white. Um, so I don't know where it's from, so, but it's very pretty. And um, this is actually my first time stitching on an opalescent fabric. So um, I haven't found it too difficult yet, maybe because it is such a light fabric, but, uh, and this is just being stitched with, with two DMC blues. Um, it's DMC something and something. <laughs> not helpful right it is dmc let me just grab my bobbins the dark blue that is most of the bird or pretty much all the bird actually is 796 and then the light blue that is the kind of vining underneath him is 799. Uh, so it's a very pretty pattern I'm not familiar with the designer but i'm really excited about it again december 1st is the only day i stitched on it but i will probably work on it some more before the holidays i'm not planning to have it done in time for christmas but uh Sometimes it's nice to take a break from the, the X's, right? And just backstitch. So those are my two new starts. Uh, and then I made progress, albeit somewhat small, on three whips. So as you know, in November, I was using the Tiny Decisions app on my phone to kind of pick my focus project for the week. I haven't done that in December yet, but I'll probably continue. Um, so the first one was Happy Fall, uh, which you guys have seen me share before. This was part of the Autumn Garden palette um, project, I guess, <laughs> the Cross Stitch the Rainbow. So this is Sweet Wing Studio, happy fall, y'all. Uh, and so I stitched on this just a couple of days. I haven't, again, the aforementioned busyness with work and life. I've not had much as much stitching time as I would normally like uh, these last few weeks. But uh, here is my progress on happy fall, y'all. And I have to admit, um, I think I'm going to start doing what Lizzie, Frizzy Lizzie Stitches does, and after my video take photos of everything, because I never remember to take them as I'm stitching. So I don't recall where I was before, um, but I'm getting close to being done with this. I haven't picked it up um, since the since its week was up, but I have the start of the Y and the rest of y'all done. Uh, so once I finish the word y'all, it's just a couple of other motifs, a flower, a pumpkin, um, some leaves and little small flowers and then finishing up the border and this guy's done. Um, I absolutely am in love, 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 love with this thread palette. I know I've said that before. I know you've heard it from me before, but I mean, just look at that variegation in there. I mean, it is just stunning. It's gorgeous. I love it so much. Um, and I have, pardon me, itchy eye. Um, and I have about five or six of the other patterns. So this was 20 five different designers who all designed a 60 by 60 or smaller pattern um, 
using this four color palette from Cottage Garden Threads. Um, and it's just, I love this pattern so much. Um, I think one of the reasons I haven't worked on it in much is because I love stitching on it so much. There's a little part of me that's going to be sad when I'm done stitching it. Why do I have two needle minders in here? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. And like a random loose needle. That's okay. <laughs> but um, for those of you who maybe haven't seen it before, this is, um, these are, this is the color palette of the threads. So, I mean, they're just so beautiful. So autumnal. Um, love it. Love it, love it, love it. So that is Happy Fall, y'all. And then the next week, my Tiny Decisions app chose the Magic Kingdom Sal, um, which was my very first Sal that I started back in January of 2020 and then promptly stopped stitching on in February of 2020 and kind of didn't really pick up again until uh, this year. Uh, I will put a picture up of what the finished project will look like. This was a free stitch along from Cunning Cross Stitch. He has the pattern available for free on his website slash blog. Uh, and it's just a really clever compilation of little scenes from 12 different Disney movies. Because this was a monthly, a new pattern came out each month in 2020. Um, so obviously this is long done. And the scenes all come together in the end to form Cinderella's castle, uh, the, like the outline silhouette of Cinderella's castle. So I'll put the picture up so you can see it. The last time I showed this, I am pretty sure I had either finished Alice in Wonderland or was very close to finishing Alice in Wonderland, but hadn't done much else. Um, stop it. Oh, I don't have any clips handy. I get that. Could you try again? Hush, Siri. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm falling apart here. Okay, there we go. I'll just fold over this way. Um, so this is where I am at now. Apologize for that little interlude of madness. So I finished the Alice in Wonderland scene. And I think maybe I had just started on Snow White. So obviously I have, I got a fair amount of progress done here. So I finished the Poison Apple um, and most of the kind of glow around it. I was out of the color that goes here. So I had to go purchase it. Here's Snow White mostly done. Her head's all done. I just need to finish the top of her bodice. And then this scene over here, sort of inside the cave and the seven little dwarves are marching here. And then this scene will be done. Um, this is just being stitched on a, a mystery sort of linen Lugana that I had. I guess it's not a Lugana because it has slubs. It's not an even weave. Just a mystery linen that I had in my stash. Um, and I will finish this eventually. It has a lot of color changes, which annoy me after a while. So I kind of can only sit and stitch on this in short sort of intervals um because I'm not I don't mind color changes but I mind them when it's like three stitches here and then four stitches here and then two stitches here and, and that's a lot of what this is um but I love Disney and I love the finished product and so I will definitely finish this at some point uh before I die hopefully so um so that is the Magic Kingdom stitch along and then the last spin of the wheel um, chose for me really something I need to be spending more time on and will probably be my focus piece for most of December but chose for me um, Hive Rules by Primrose Cottage Stitches and if you are a returning viewer you know that this I am actually stitching as a model for Brandy of Bestitch Me for her new brick and mortar shop. Now she was very generous she shipped all the patterns and stuff out in August and basically was like if I could have it back within like the next year it would be great um, and I really want to have it to her by like February because um, it's a big pattern, but it's also a fairly simple pattern. Um, I got a little, um, it went in time out for a little bit because I realized, so the DMC colors, a lot of them are quite similar to each other, especially the, the blues, um, which is part of what makes the pattern so appealing, right? But you've got these browns and these kind of greeny blues, and a lot of them are quite similar in color, right? Like these two in particular are quite similar in color. Um, and I realized as I was like congratulating myself for finishing up the first part of the, like the first sort of motif band of the pattern, um, that I had used the wrong color blue for most of the sort of border between the top and the bottom part of the pattern. And quite honestly, if I was stitching this for myself, I would have been like, whatever, it's fine and left it. But since this is a model, I want it to be as perfect as I can possibly make it. Um, so I ended up frogging those stitches and 
having to put them back in. So when I realized I had to frog them, I was kind of deflated and bummed. And so I kind of just let it sit for a little while, but I put them in and I got started on the second motif. So here is where I am at right now with hive rules. So I have the top motif completed. I mean, I love, this is a 40 count Lugana, Lugana? Yeah, no, 40 count even weave um, in the color honey from Bestitch Me. And um, I just, I'm absolutely in love with this color. It's so easy to stitch on. Um, this is 40 count, so I'm just stitching with one strand. Um, and I just, this pattern is so pretty. I love it so much. So um, I'm having a lot of fun stitching on it. So this will probably be my focus piece for December because I really want to make sure that I'm not keeping her waiting um, for a ridiculous period of time. So that is Hive Rules. I only stitched on this for like two days. The first day I, I frogged and then restitched the border here. Um, and then I, then to the second day I stitched that B, um, which is going to spell the word B to say B sweet like honey, which is what the second sort of band of this pattern says. All right. So that's all of my stitchy progress to date. And moving into sort of whatever I wanted to talk about next. Oh, I'm making a mess over here. I've got patterns loose. I've got whatever. I'll fix it later. Um, so those are all of the whips that I can show you, right? It is the holiday season. I do have a couple of other new starts and whips in progress, but they're gifts for people who may or may not watch my floss tube. So I'm not taking the chance um, and uh, won't be showing those, but I will show them when they're done and gifted. So I either will take them back <laughs> to film them uh, for the ones that maybe I can do that, um, or I'll just take photos and share those um, afterwards. So moving on, plans and haul. So I already shared with you uh, my plans for coming up. So I do plan to um, probably not film a recorded floss tube again in 2022, but I do hope I shouldn't say hope. I will do at least one live during the winter break. So please keep your eye on uh, my Instagram for when I will plan to do that. Um, and I'll be working on hive rules a bit. And um, the end of the season, the end of the year is, is stressful. I have a lot of big planning I'm doing at work. Um, just the the fun and the stress of being a single parent in the holidays. Um, we don't even have any of our Christmas decorations up yet. We're doing that tonight. Um, so I'm really not putting a lot of pressure on myself to like have to do anything specific. I'm going to really let myself be a moody stitcher other than hive rules. Like I am going to kind of set some goals for myself for hive rules for December, but beyond that, I'm going to kind of let myself be a moody stitcher and stitch on whatever I want. Um, because stitching is my, my, own, my therapy, my, my relax and chill and de-stress. So, um, I don't want to add any pressure or stress to myself by saying, oh, I have to work on this piece or this pattern. Um, so who knows what I'll have to show you in my first video in January, what I'll decide to work on. I might have seven new starts. Uh, I might have a ton of progress on, on a couple of different whips. Who knows? Uh, stay tuned and find out. Uh, all right. So last piece is haul and happy mail. So as I mentioned, I had, um, I realized that I had some uh, piece of happy mail and some haul that I've had sitting here for over a month and totally forgot to share. Um, at least I think I did. God, I hope to God I didn't already share it. And I've just forgotten because then y'all can just make fun of me in the comments. It's totally fine. So the first piece of haul, and I apologize if I have shown this, but I'm pretty sure I haven't, um, is I purchased my first ever totes um, purchase and kit. I saw um, from Jacob and Modern Folk Embroidery um, his dark crosses, some of his newer dark crosses patterns. Um, and there were two that I just fell in love with and I got this one. Um, so this says here be dragons in Latin. I'm a little intimidated by it. I have to admit, I love Jacob's patterns and they scare the, they intimidate me. But I've, as I've shared before on this channel, I was born in the year of the dragon. I wear a dragon pendant 24 seven. I love dragons. If I was not terrified of needles, I would have a tattoo of a dragon somewhere. I just love dragons. Um, and so when I saw this pattern, I was like, oh, darn it. Okay. I have to get it. Um, and then I saw that Evertote had worked with him to create a kit for it. So I ordered their kit because then I didn't have to think about what I wanted to do. And so it came with this gorgeous linen in the color catnip, which I just adore. Um, and so this is a 36 count 
linen and the color is really seems to be picking it mostly gray but there's definitely like some tan and green undertones as well um, which is so pretty and oh I forgot to open the bag apologies there will be crinkling for a moment um, and then it came with um, and this is fabric by Leo and Roxy I can't remember if I mentioned that and then it came with all the skeins needed um, in Leo and Roxy floss to stitch the pattern and this floss is called Plum Shadow is the color. And I'm trying to get it to pick up. It is a gorgeous variegation of like brownish purple, right plum and lighter and some gray and some, I mean, just, and some what looks like actual brown. I mean, I think this is going to be stunning. Um, this floss is just gorgeous. So this will be my first time ever stitching with Leo Roxy, um, but I know um, like Bridgen, the museum stitcher, loves their flosses. Um, so I'm excited to give them a try. It's kind of been one of the things I've been doing a lot of in 2022 is trying, you know, trying new designers, new flosses, uh, new dyers. Um, just really the, the cross stitch world is so vast now and so many people are involved in it that um, it's fun. It's fun to try new people and support small businesses woman-owned businesses um, and men-owned businesses, right? Obviously, Modern Folk Embroidery is Jacob, but um, it's been a lot of fun. So that pattern, I haven't started it yet, obviously, but it is in this awesome pattern bag, fabric bag, project bag. Words escape me today. Um, that Megan, the Seattle Stitcher, made, and she had some extra fabric, and so um, she made an extra bag, and I bought it from her because it's too cute. I mean, look, seriously, look at all the books. The pages and then the library on the back I loved it so yay thank you Megan um, it seemed appropriate for a, this project bag to hold my here be dragons because the pattern is based off of like the creatures and things like that that were on old nautical maps or just old maps in general for areas that were unexplored or unknown they would often write like here be monsters or here be dragons um, so uh, it seemed appropriate to kind of put it in an old kind of dusty library type project bag. So that's two of my um, older haul and investments and a few other things to share. So I also made a purchase from Abby at the Top Knot Stitcher. Um, I purchased more than I can show here because some of the things I purchased are for aforementioned gifts. So I can't share those because that might give away too. But I did purchase the reindeer from Cottage Garden Samplings from their Year in the Woods series because he's just too gorgeous. And I, it has taken every fiber of my being to not start him already because um, he's just gorgeous. I might, he might not get put back in my pattern stash. He might get kitted up today because why not, right? Although I'm running out of project bags. I told myself once I run out of project bags, no more new starts until I finish things. Um, and then the other one I purchased is Cottage Garden Samplings new, the first in their new series. Um, the Snowman Collection series, and this is the Needle Worker, because seriously, how cute. And then I, like I said, purchased a few other patterns that I can't share because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who may or may not watch my channel. I want to keep things surprises. So then the next thing is I did attend the Jingle Ball, which was put together by Steph of Lindy Stitches and 11 other designers. It was a totally virtual event. And if you went, then you know that even despite some of the technical glitches, just how, I mean, just how well produced it was for a fully online event. I mean, it was, it was really cool. And, and I was only able to really be in the ball and, and sit at a, a few stitching tables for only a couple of hours on Saturday night. It went from Friday at six to Saturday at midnight, basically, um, or 11.59 PM. But I really kind of only had time to visit the shops um, and then stitch for maybe a couple hours at a table that weekend was very full for me. Um, but I had seen some of the exclusive ornament designs that you could only purchase at the Jingle Ball. And that sort of what said, okay, I have to attend. Um, and you might see why when you see some of these patterns. So um, I really did quite a bit of shopping at the Jingle Ball um, and have that haul to share with you. So 
uh, let's just jump right into that. So the first is I did order from Steph at Lindy Stitches um, for a pattern that I purchased at the Jingle Ball, this adorable polka dot Zweigert linen. Um, I mean, seriously, look how cute that is. Um, and I will show you the pattern that I am going to stitch on it. If I can find it here without too much rustling. Oh yeah, here it is because the model was stitched on a polka dot pattern, but I purchased this pattern from Tiny Modernist. This was one of her. So all of the designers had an exclusive ornament design that was only gonna be available at the Jingle Ball. And then most of them also had at least one other pattern that was an exclusive design to the Jingle Ball, at least for the next nine months to a year or so. Um, and so this was Tiny Modernist's exclusive design to the Jingle Ball. And I mean, and seriously, it's just so adorable, right? You can do the little motifs individually into little ornaments or little like holiday bookmarks or, you know, whatever. But just, then just the pattern itself is so cute. And I just loved it on that polka dot fabric. Um, so this is another one that quite possibly um, might get kitted up today too, because it's just so cute and I want to start it and it's adorable and it looks so cute on that polka dot fabric. So when I saw that Lindy Stitches had some in her shop, uh, add to cart, it went. So I have that fabric. Obviously I have this pattern from Tiny Modernist. Uh, Tiny Modernist also had all of their other patterns, um, that were in the Jingle Ball on sale. So I also purchased this, which was not exclusive to the Jingle Ball. In fact, I think it came out last Christmas or last winter season. Um, but I did purchase this because again, I just, I thought it was so pretty. Um, and my, my piece of linen, my polka dot linen from Lindy Stitches might actually be big enough for both of these. I have to do the math and see. But I purchased this pattern as well. Okay, y'all. This was actually, this next pattern is the whole entire reason I was hemming and hawing about whether to go to the Jingle Ball because I knew I had a busy weekend and I'm like, I'm not really gonna have time to fully participate. Um, but then they started sharing sort of sneak peeks of the patterns and um, I saw this one. It was like sold, done because I mean, for real. For real, I mean, seriously. This is another one I wanna like just stop filming right now and go start stitching. And in the exclusive ornament book, his girlfriend is in there so you can stitch the pair. This is Coulter the Fox. And seriously, I mean, you just want to pet him and smoosh him. He's so stinking cute. This is from the po Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I've never stitched any of their patterns, so I'm, I'm really excited about this. But like, I mean, come on. Come on. All right. Okay, I'm done. Y'all are like, okay, Heather, we get it. Move on. Um, so, but seriously, he's so cute. Uh, and then I also purchased Christmas calendar. Um, my thinking for this one, A, is also, so, all right, at the risk of making this video way too long. We have um, two Christmas trees in my house. Um, we have our normal one that's in the living room. We have another one that's slightly smaller that the cats chewed through the cord on, so the lights don't work anymore. Um, and oh, we might have three. We might still have like a small four foot one too. Either way, we have at least, we have more than one Christmas tree, one without functioning lights. Um, and so I've had the thought that over the years, um, I might like to create a cross stitched, a fully cross stitched ornament tree. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I bought this because I'm like, oh, I could do each of these days individually um, as little ornaments that could go on a, a cross stitch only Christmas tree. Um, but then also my kids are getting older and I'm kind of starting to think ahead to, you know, when they're out of the house and this would make like, you get a cute little like Christmas themed pin and this would make such a great little advent calendar, um, that, or Christmas countdown, I guess technically it's not an advent calendar, a Christmas countdown calendar that, um, that they could take with them to their homes when they're out on their own. So, um, kind of excited about that. So that is tiny modernist Christmas calendar. And then I have, go. Uh, I also went a little crazy in the blue flower shop. There's this adorable cozy Christmas cat. This was, I believe, an exclu her ex exclusive design for Jingle Ball. I might be wrong, but I mean, seriously, how dapper is he in his little Christmas sweater? Love it. Um, and then I also purchased her holiday card 2021 because seriously, look at that alpaca in his mucklucks and sweater. He's so cute. Um, and this was a companion 
So her ornament in the ornament book is a giraffe in a sweater. So they go together. So I had to get it. And then my family, we love cardinals. So I had to get this one as well. Um, Winter Valentine. The two little, the lady and, and her boyfriend, cardinals. And I've never stitched a Teresa Kogut pattern. So I saw this and thought it was really sweet. Um, so I got this as well. This is Hope for the World by Teresa Kogut. And then of course I had to get the ornament book, uh, Jingle Bell Bobbles, uh, which has the 12 exclusive ornament designs from the 12 designers of Christmas. Um, and I won't flip through the whole book, but on the back, I'll let it sit here for a little bit, um, are the pictures. So here, there she is. His girlfriend. I mean, come on, seriously. And then there's the giraffe. I mean, come on. How cute are all of these? Um, so these are 11 of the 12 designs. And then the, the other one was the, the jingle bells on the front. Um, so yeah, so this was my last purchase there. And then these were, and these were, these were from Satsuma Street little jingle bells so I am now on a um, stitch from stash only <laughs> uh, rule because I have to save up for stitch con and I've spent too much money but the other thing I did this week is I have a lot of digital patterns right from Etsy from designers um, from cross stitch magazines that I check out from my library um, rather than you know, if I were to check out the physical magazine, I'd photocopy the patterns that I want, um, or I would go buy the magazine if there were a lot of them. But with the digital copy, I can save photos. And I realized that I have all these patterns on my computer and I'm losing track of what I have. So I also this week went through and printed up just the like photo page for most of them. Some of them, the pattern was on the same page, so I can't show all of them, which I wouldn't anyway, I would make this video too long. It's already too long. Um, but I, I did print up like the photo page of each of the patterns that I have available digitally or on my computer digitally um, to go with the rest of my patterns so that when I'm looking for something to stitch, I A, don't have to look two places or B, remember to go look on my computer. So this was something else that I did this week. All right, y'all still with me? This video is getting longer than usual for me. So um, I hope that you enjoyed sort of my progress on things and where I, what I've been working on and stay tuned for my Instagram for, for my live uh, update. And now why don't we go ahead and do the giveaway? So I shared with you um, some of my purchases from, from Top Knot Stitcher, uh, from Abby, and uh, shared that I have been sort of one of my attempts this year has been to purchase more from um, small businesses, uh, especially when I go online, right? Um, I have a local needle workshop. It's almost an hour away. So I kind of have to like think and plan to go there. It's not a like, let's just go see what's at the shop this weekend, kind of a drive. Um, so I have been, when I want to purchase things online, I've been trying to use smaller, um, you know, sort of individually owned shops and uh, Top Knot Stitcher was one I kept hearing about. And so I went to check her out. If you are not familiar with Top Knot Stitcher, um, then I definitely encourage you to take advantage of this giveaway to check her out. Um, her service is wonderful. Her shipping is super fast. Everything always arrives in perfect condition. I've never had a pattern be bent or creased or anything. So, um, yeah, and she has both digital and physical patterns available on her website. So she reached out to, um, to folks on Instagram and sort of invited those of us who wanted to to participate in a giveaway. So I'm super happy to, to share this with you all. Um, she's the shop that I bought all of my autumn garden samplings or autumn garden palette uh, patterns from. And she has, I think, 22 of the 25 designs in stock uh, right now in her shop. So um, she is offering a $10 gift card to her shop um, to, to purchase patterns. Um, if you are, she'll only ship the gift card um, or she only, she only ships to the U.S. and Canada. 
Canada, I think right now. Um, but if you are international, as I mentioned, she does have digital patterns available for a lot of designers and for some of her own designs as well. Um, so she is willing to honor that $10 gift card for digital purchases um, for international customers. So this giveaway is open to anyone who is interested. Um, and all I ask is that you visit her shop. I will put her URL in the description and I'll put it up on the screen here as well. But visit her shop, poke around, um, definitely check out the Autumn Garden Stitch Along projects. I believe she still has them sort of in their own category that you can just click the link and see all of them. Um, and leave me a comment below with what your favorite pattern is um, from the Autumn Garden Stitch Along um, series, I guess. Uh, and then when I film my next video, which like I said, won't be until probably right around the first of the year. So you have kind of the rest of December to, to so if you stumble on this video late, you can, um, you can still take advantage if it hasn't, if it's still 2022, you can still enter this giveaway. So like I said, go to Top Knot Stitcher um, shop website, take a look at the Autumn Garden palette um, projects, and then leave me a comment with your favorite one. Um, standard floss tube giveaway rules apply, right? Please don't use the word giveaway, raffle, prize, drawing, anything like that in your comment. Please be a public subscriber to my channel. Um, and uh, I think that's it. So yeah, just leave me your favorite pattern name from the sampler and uh, I will do the drawing at the beginning of the year. I hope those of you who celebrate the Christmas holidays or really whatever holiday you celebrate, if you celebrate in the month of December, I hope that you are able to have a joyous and as stress-free as possible celebration. I hope that you are able to celebrate with the loved ones in your life with whom you want to celebrate. And I wish all of you good health, good cheer, happy stitching, um, and as always, hug your loved ones, take care of yourselves. I would love to have you check out Abby's shop and uh, I will hopefully see you when I do my live. So check out Instagram, keep up with me there, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, everyone. Bye.